Apple and Android devices, unfortunately, are not especially good in uh, protecting your privacy. Carrying a phone around is something that we do without thinking. It's completely normalized because smartphones are awesome. I have the world's knowledge at my fingertips anytime I want it. But as Assange said, a mobile phone is a tracking device that also makes calls. Now that doesn't make me stop loving my phone, but it is important to discuss their risks so that we can make informed choices and start to make small changes that can help give us back our privacy without throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Now in this video, I'm gonna discuss apps, phones transmitting signals without your knowledge, and the Wi-Fi probe request that you probably didn't realize were a real security threat. And I'll also give you some tips on how to increase your phone's privacy. Let's start with apps. Do you really know what's going on inside your phone? Which apps are sending out or receiving signals? The central problem with smartphone use today is you have no idea what the hell it's doing at any given time. Like the phone has the screen off. You don't know what it's connected to. Apple uh, and iOS, unfortunately, makes it impossible to see uh, what kind of network connections are constantly made on the device and to intermediate them. Snowden says that Apple and Google don't provide tools to stop apps spying on you because they claim that they would be too complicated for people to use. Now there are some tools like Little Snitch for computers, but not for phones. We think it's too complicated for people to do this. We think there's too many connections being made. If you think there are too many communications happening, if you think there's too much complexity in there, it needs to be simplified. Even when our phone is in airplane mode, we can't tell if it's still sending out or receiving signals, and there is no physical switch to turn these transmitters off. Not only that, but we can't even remove the batteries from our phones anymore. So these apps and our devices can be accessed at any time without us being aware. There is an industry that is built on keeping this invisible. Uh, and what we need to do is we need to make the activities of uh, our devices, whether it's a phone, whether it's a computer, whatever, uh, more visible and understandable to the average person and then give them control over it. To combat this, in 2016, Snowden and hacker Andrew Bunny Huang built a prototype iPhone add-on called the Introspection Engine that detects if the devices are secretly transmitting. The process for building these is incredibly complicated. They outline exactly how they did it in the paper that I've linked below. And unfortunately, it's a very involved process. Yes, you can crack open your smartphone and do things like physically remove the microphone, and maybe I'll even make a tutorial about how to do this, but the average person is probably looking for more simple solutions. Why should you be concerned about your phone being a surveillance tool? Well, for some professions, privacy is essential. For example, investigative journalists are often in danger of facing retaliation for their work. The Committee to Protect Journalists says at least 1,240 journalists have been killed for their work since 1992, and this is a very conservative estimate. As Bunny Huang and Snowden said, governments and powerful political institutions are actively exploiting the unwitting emissions of phones, leaving journalists, activists, and rights workers in a new position of constant vulnerability. But what if you're not a journalist or a lawyer or activist, rights worker, or someone who might be targeted? Why should you be concerned? The federal government can't even count how many laws there are. So how can individuals make sure that they're not in violation of one of them? You probably do have something to hide. You just don't know it yet. So you probably don't want a surveillance device in your pocket tracking your every move and every online action. So what can you do? Well, first of all, clean out your unused apps from your phone routinely. Haven't used it in months? Just delete it. If you want to use it later, just reinstall. Fewer apps means fewer security holes that can be exploited. Also, check the permissions that your apps are asking for and be more discerning about what apps you allow. A dictionary that's asking for permission to your camera? Yeah, probably don't download that. You can likely find a better app. A routine app detox is smart. Also, if you have any old phones lying around, why not wipe them and use them to isolate apps across different devices? Maybe you only ever access social media on one of your devices, but your two-factor and your wallets are on another device that you usually don't take around with you. Siloing apps can be a really helpful security measure. Now, let's talk about Wi-Fi probe requests. Whenever you're carrying a phone, whenever the phone is turned on, uh, there is a record of your presence at that place that is being made. You can't see it because radio frequency emissions are invisible. It's screaming in the air, saying, here I am, here I am. 
There are lots of ways that your movements attract, and one of them is via Wi-Fi probe requests, where a device that isn't connected to any network will constantly scan the surrounding area for Wi-Fi networks that it can potentially connect to. It sends these probe requests to the general public, and the way that it technically works is the mobile node actively scans across the Wi-Fi space, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, for viable 802.11 access points. It sounds complicated, but it's basically the wireless equivalent of, hey, is anybody there? Any nearby Wi-Fi networks that are available will respond and say, hey, I'm here. And those network names will show up in your list of available Wi-Fi networks. Most Android and iPhone devices send out this request every few seconds, but these probe requests also contain additional information, an SSID or your remembered Wi-Fi networks. Basically, Wi-Fi devices like your phone have a list of every Wi-Fi network they've ever been connected to. Often, the system stores this information for you without notification. When you have Wi-Fi turned on, your device is constantly broadcasting the names of those remembered networks, and that is how your phone so seamlessly connects to Wi-Fi when you visit a familiar place. At all times when Wi-Fi is switched on, your phone is broadcasting your list of previously connected Wi-Fi networks, basically shouting out, are any of these connections around? This is called active scanning, and if any of these networks are around, your phone will automatically connect to them. That's why when you go to your favorite coffee shop, your phone has automatically connected to the Wi-Fi, because it has been shouting out that Wi-Fi name to the world all day ever since the moment you first connected to it. Now this can be a huge security risk, used to identify individual devices and track locations. You're probably the only person in the world who has that exact list of Wi-Fi networks on your phone. So it's a uniquely identifiable fingerprint. Because this unique signal is being emitted from your device constantly, it allows places like shopping malls to track your location with incredible accuracy. They know exactly which stores you visit, how much time you spent there, how fast you walked from one end of the building to the other. It's super easy to record sensitive Wi-Fi packets of those around you, and they can be used to detect the presence of someone in a particular area. When your neighbor is back home on his computer, if an employee arrived at their office yet. The packets also contain a lot of private information, like your employer, your ISP, where you go to party, or for holidays, or which conferences you've attended. Because Wi-Fi networks often have explicit names, like Pete's Coffee Shop, or Blockchain Week Conference, or Verizon 1234. This information can even reveal how fast you've been traveling, whether you caught the bus to work. Now, if someone wants to track you for whatever reason, this is not a bad way to do it. And if someone wants to send you malware and they know that you've previously stayed at a particular hotel, sending a rogue email to you seemingly from that hotel might be enough to dupe you. All of this is possible just by having your Wi-Fi enabled, not even connected to a particular network. In fact, particularly when not connected. So a solution, keep your Wi-Fi switched off whenever you don't need it. And when you do need the internet, use Ethernet wherever possible so that you don't need to turn on Wi-Fi. Yes, Ethernet on a phone. I have an entire episode on using Ethernet on your phone and why Snowden recommends it. And not sending out constant Wi-Fi probe requests will also improve your battery life. The next step is forgetting networks. On your laptop and Android device, you can usually access a list of all the Wi-Fi networks that your device has remembered. Delete them, connect to individual networks as needed, and then forget the network. However, if you use an iPhone, you can't even see the list of Wi-Fi networks that your device is constantly transmitting. The best you can do is each time you come in contact with a known network and your phone automatically connects, as soon as you disconnect, click forget network so that it won't keep broadcasting the network. Wi-Fi probe requests are sent in the clear whether you have your data encrypted or not. Now it's good to know this and a really simple solution is just shut off your Wi-Fi when you're not using it and forget your previous networks. You don't have to throw your phone out or cover it in alfoil. Just be educated about how your devices work so that you can make smart choices when using them. It seems that targeted probe requests are in the process of being phased out, but according to data from Wiggle.net, we're far away from that happening. 
and in March we actually saw the greatest number of targeted requests ever. So make sure you also keep your operating system updated to reflect the most recent security updates. They can see everything about you, they can see everything about what your device is doing, and they can do whatever they want with your device. You on the other hand, you paid for the device. But increasingly these corporations own it. Increasingly these governments own it. If you have any privacy tips or concerns, please leave them in the comments below. And before you leave, please subscribe to the channel and like the video if you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching.